So let's remember this type tick A option. Remember, an option is a non-primitive data type, and it can be two things. It could be nothing, or it could be something. It could either be none or some tick A. These are the two constructors for the type option. We've seen these constructors before when we worked with non-primitive data types. So how do we represent this on the abstract stack machine? Uh, well, actually, under the hood, it looks the same exact way that it has when we worked with these other non-primitive data types with constructors, right? Uh, in the heap, you'll have an actual cell, a different cell for each of the constructors. So none is just a cell with just the word none. And then sum, you have a cell for sum, and then an then adjacent cell is pointing to whatever value it is. That's how it looks under the hood. But because options are so common uh, when we're working especially with, with queues and all of our examples, this can get messy if we have to keep on drawing none boxes and some constructor middle boxes for all of the times that we use options in queues, which is many. So we developed this nifty little shorthand. Instead of having to draw an, an arrow to none, we can just draw a slash in that box. And that means that this value is none. Uh, with sum, instead of having to actually point to a sum constructor box that then points to the value, this can just point straight to the value box through a sum bubble. This is called a sum bubble, and one of the big point losers on exams is forgetting sum bubbles. Don't forget your happy little sum bubbles. This is a happy little sum bubble. Another thing to note about this. Uh, if you have, say, x and y, and they're both equal to none, OCaml has it so that they are going to be referentially equal. And this is just really uh, for efficiency. If you have two things that are none, it's kind of vacuous, it's kind of arbitrary. We'll just say that they are referentially equal. So two things that are none, even if they're completely separate, they're going to be considered referentially equal. The same cannot be said for some. Even if I have something else that is some value like this, these two things would not be referentially equal. Remember the double equals because they're interacting with value through different sum bubbles. It's different sum bubbles that are enabling them to access value. Uh, but if, say, this guy was going through this same sum bubble, then since they're going through the same sum bubble, these would be referentially equal. So it all comes down to this, the sum bubble in which they're accessing value. Because remember, this is just a, a shorthand for actually going through a constructor sum box that points to value. So if those two are not the, the exact referentially the same, then they would not be considered referentially equal. So keep this in mind when we do our upcoming example. Okay, so here's the example code that we have, and I'll just run through it really quickly. Sorry about slanted, I struggled to keep it all put in the frame. Let Q and two, which is an NQ node, be a Q node uh, with V equals two and next being none. And remember, next in the type definition is declared as mutable, because this is something that we might want to be able to be changed later on. Uh, then we have a Q1, which is a Q node, with a value equals 1, V equals 1, and next being sum Q and 2. Sum, none, these are option types, because there might be nothing there. Then we have Q, which is an int Q, uh, V Q, with head equals sum Q and 1, and tail equals sum Q and 2. So let's get through this baby on the ASM, and uh, whenever I get to the ASM, Everybody starts sweating. Let's do it. All right, so first thing that we have, we look at the left, leftmost ready expression. Q and 2, which is an AQ node, would be this. Okay, that's the leftmost ready expression. So what do we have to do? When is this ready? When whatever is after the equal sign is a value. So we need to get this to be a value. Uh, well, we already saw how to work with this. Remember, this is going to be a double entry cell, these mutable records, we saw this before, with a V field and a uh, next field. What else? Well, next is mutable, so I need to put this double box in there. And uh, so V is just two, and next is none. So I use the none shorthand. Now I've allocated this, so I can just point to it from there. Okay, now this is ready. This whole entire thing is ready. So I can push this to the stack. Like this. Keep going. Leftmost expression is this next let. Uh, so we need to get this ready. We do the same exact thing. It's going to be another mutable record. 
double entry cell, V equals 1, next, mutable next. Now remember, we have this shorthand for sum. So the next is sum QN2. So we know that it's going to be going to QN2. I'll just do it down there. But uh, it's sum QN2. So we have to draw our happy little sum bubble. Don't forget your happy little sum bubble. So this is where we are. Um, now we can zoom. I'll go down a bit, just point to it. And now this whole thing is ready to be pushed. QN1 is just this. So now we have Q and Q, head equals sum QN1, tail equals sum QN2. And remember, these are both uh, mutable in the type definition. So we do the same thing as before. We have this double entry record, double entry cell with a uh, head and a tail. I hope you can see this. Head is sum QN1, so it's just going to be pointing to QN1. Through a sum bubble, tail is sum QN2. Now notice, this sum bubble and this sum bubble are not the same. So it would be, uh, they would not be referentially equal, because they're not the same sum bubble. Okay, now that we've allocated this, just like that, this is now ready to be pushed. It's ready, so we can push it to the stack. Q, going right there. Money in the bank. Cha-ching, we did it. Nicely done.